five and a quarter for you. Perfect, let's do it. Five, six, seven. 1080, let's do it. Today we are here at the Houston TriStar Card Show. It's been like two years since I've last been here, but I'm excited for the show because it is a vintage heavy show and there's a lot of raw cards here. So there's a lot of opportunities to find things to grade. Anyways, I'm gonna take you through it and let's make some deals happen. I was gonna say, I'm interested in your four vintage baseball cards. What do you think you could do on the lot? $1,075. I was thinking around maybe 1025. 1025? Yeah. Hey, anyone who gets a thousand fifty, cut me in the middle. Do you have like a twenty-five dollar slab or twenty-five dollar card you could throw in? Too cheap. Maybe. That's what if we put that Dan Fouts in? Where would you be at? Uh, Dan Fouts. Uh, I have more of a vintage audience. I, mostly, I got mostly you. baseball, but. I throw that in football. for uh, so if you did ten fifty on these, I throw mm -hmm. that in for thirty to ten eighty. Ten eighty. Let's do it. All right. Let me see what I have. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Man, a lot of people were after the, uh, the satchel. And, I always yeah. get asked about those two. Oh, mostly satchel. Not as much yeah. as this one, but when people realize you have three 500 home run hitters on there, yeah. it's immediate like, oh, I didn't know that card existed. Yeah. And yeah. it's always pretty easy with that. But yeah. what's your name? Dylan. Dylan Ryan. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. First deal of the show for 1080. Obviously, you have the Beater Satchel page, but this is an extremely popular card. Ozzy Smith. Then we have the Home Run Kings right over here. Really, really cool card, although you can find them way cheaper in lower grades. This is the card we were talking about for the 500 home runs. Had this a few different times, and this was able to bridge the gap on the deal. So let's keep making a lot of vintage deals here today. There you go. It's just kind of random as far, man. All good. If I get a larger stack, could you work with me a little bit on pricing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I try and be at 90% on singles and somewhere in the 85%. Okay. I'd be interested in those, and I'm kind of curious your price on the Cy Young as well. Uh, 2500 on Cy Young. 2500 on Cy Young. Yeah. And then just let me know on these ones as well, and we'll finalize that out. Okay. Fifty is the only recent. 450, 375, 550. Are you good at 450 on that? I'd probably use that 375, even though it's like a new label. Uh, that's it. That's at pretty. That's pretty similar. Like. Yeah, 375. 375. I do keep cash. Keep cash. I'd have to pay all the rest on this. Though. That's okay. Thank you, man. What's your name? Brian. What's Brian, yours? Josh. Nice to meet you, Josh. I appreciate it. We've been at the show for like maybe an hour and a half and already <laughs> built, built another pretty large deal. All of this obviously highlighted by the Cy Young, highlighted by the Al Kaline rookie. And there's still even great stuff like this Schmidt over here, Cepeda in a seven, Yaz in a five. I mean, this is just a great vintage lot. So. We'll see what ends up happening throughout the rest of the day, but even picking up these first two deals today makes a card show. Do I look at your comments here? Too because of the fading, I assume. Unless I'm missing something. It's a good looking example though. What do you think it could be on all this? 1650. 1650? So yeah. What's the breakdown? How much is that I'm about? Fourteen hundred here. Fourteen there. Two fifty here. Two fifty. Seventeen, and you throw in that five point five Ford. Five point five Ford. The Ford with eighty on it. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so we're able to close that deal for a 1700. I thought this Clemente looked nice. Obviously discolored a little bit, but great looking example on this one. Then this was the Ford that we got thrown in at the end for another 50 bucks. And then can't go wrong with the Black Sox scandal, chick handle. It's a good looking one, but it does have like a stamp or writing on the back. And here's where all the raw cards that was able to get picked up as well. Hoping I run into some Lone Jack inventors. I'm building that set. 
you build up non sports sets? Yeah, 1887 Loan Jack Inventors. Wow. You know all that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. I've been building it for three and a half years. One thing I did find out, my wife was a big non sports collector, but I think I got some of the. Uh, Anything that's that came out of uh, London? Yeah, they don't have any. They have hardly any. Well, they have value, but not a whole lot. Well, I was gonna say they aren't they aren't stamped like all the tobacco companies have, in America had a stamp what factory that they were on. Hey, you know a lot about it. Where are you from? Orlando. Really? Yeah. Hey, well, I'll take these. There was one that had the uh, the Ty Cobb uh, back. Huh? Yeah, it's a seven-figure card now. I know. The Ty Cobb back. back. Way back. I could be. <laughs> you think I got? A, I could get a million dollars that card? I think so. That's his Why'd best. Why'd you sell that card? <laughs> you wouldn't let me sell that. You wouldn't let me sell the new stuff, man. We had 251 Bowman. Remember we had that I'll display? I'll sell 81 Ryans. <laughs> because that was yeah. a Lucky 7 Ty Cobb find. Those were at auction a few years ago. We had those. We had a... Uh, Let me see. I'll let them went for that? They sold the 7 Ty Cobbs for $3 million, and that was back in 2018, before the boom. You remember those? We yeah. yeah. gave away, gave away the, the shows. Major League Baseball, we were doing it for free. Yeah. Major League Baseball called me. They wanted me to pay them out of $8,000. What the anyway, I still found, I, I found a few of those. Thank you. It's worth about five dollars. So we're able to pick up these 15 T206 cards for seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. Different Hall of Famers in there. You can see Lajoy. You can also see Joss over there. Brown. All all super <laughs> common backs, but still finding them raw out of show. How to pick them up? Pretty easy deal. You do 160 on this, you get 200 on it. 160. Sure. Awesome. Awesome, thank, thank you. Thank you. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan? What's yours? Daryl. Nice Are to meet you, Daryl. No, I'm from Orlando. Oh, okay. I well, blew up for the show. It's good to see somebody buying vintage cars that doesn't have gray hair. <laughs> I buy quite a lot of vintage. Good, good. So I picked up this 1951 Tops ringside of Joe Lewis, recently a heavyweight champion, one of the best boxers in the 30s and the 1940s. What's really cool though is this is one of the first sets before the 1952 Tops baseball set. A lot of people have the misconception that that was the first flagship set that Tops ever created, but they have a full boxing set over one year earlier. I have a few others in there, but I did not have this Joe Lewis. So I think I'll be putting it in the PC, but not 100% sure as of yet. Stay my stack. Town, man. I will. I'm going to start just building my stack over time. So if I'm interested, yeah. So I had... That's the last mantle I had. I had five mantles at the beginning of the show, and I have one left. Alright, let me know you'll be around on those ones. Seven fifty. Take a hundred off. Seven fifty on it. You get the seven twenty-five with the deal. Good. Appreciate it. Easy. Quick four lot deal. Seven twenty-five. Two sixty-fives. Second year bench. This is a lot nicer than that raw one I picked up today. The nineteen sixty Banks All Star. So Ruth Cut Auto. But well, what makes this special is this golf club was owned by the owner of the Boston Red Sox, the guy that sold them to the Yankees. So what an iconic piece of memorabilia. So I wanted to take a look at your Maris over there, your Carew, Hodges, Heiner, and your double play. I can't figure out why this is the stain. That's what I was trying to figure There's, out. Look at one of the corners. I was so mad about it. I think it makes more sense. I was so mad about it. Like on the back, look at one of the corners. That's the only thing I could find. That little gum stain, they got the seven on it for that. I was so mad. That's horrible. Say the risotto? Yeah, the risotto as well. Oh, a lot of people 
smell it already. The first thing I do every time yeah. I do that. I was listening to you talk to him about the vintage and the, the, vintage and the, the modern. And I only have modern to fund my vintage. So this is just but you're like, like you're the example of the person in the middle though that does modern to get in the vintage side of things. Yeah. So I mean, I, my my PC is all is all strictly vintage and and Astros, right? And that's it. well, that's fine because like you're an Astros fan. That's how you have fun, right? Yeah. You gotta you every, collect what you enjoy. Everything else is just strictly to like grow. Yeah, my it's vintage. the best way to do it. I know a few people that do that. I feel like you got a good deal. It is because like look how sharp the corners are on it. The, the color is the reason why it's a two. Otherwise, I think it would grade like about a three. It's maybe got a, three and a half. It's got like a... A little indent on it. Yeah. But yeah. I've had indents even grade fives, though. Because I sent in a 55 maze, and they got a four or five with a small indent on it. As long as it's not too big. I would, I would talk about that. Okay. Do you have anything else in there that... Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I did... I mean, most of this, to be honest with you, this is stuff I'm buying to like sell and upgrade into other stuff. So. May I? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That's a great looking card right there. Thank you. I picked up a beater of that today as well. But it's not in there. So it's in my raw lot that I'm gonna get traded. I call them beaters too. Thank you for showing me that. No problem. Um, okay, so you want to know what I would do in all this? Yeah, I mean, if you want to work on some sort of trading cash for the Clemente, I'm all game with that. Okay. You know, assuming you got a Assuming you got a, a good deal on this, would you take this in 500? Well, I paid pretty close to sticker on that just because that's what, like, how nice it presents it. Sometimes I can get off sticker on stuff, but like, if you look at a lot of other twos, they're way off centered, right? Like, the corners are pretty beat, there's yeah. wrinkles in them. Like, yeah, it's a good looking two. I just wanted a little bit better card than this, but I'm I'm open to it though. I I, think, I was looking for a PSA three or three and a half, you know. Yeah. Um, but it is it is it is good for a two. It's just the color that puts it there. You know. The three is probably gonna be over two grand. Yeah, they they go for just below, just if, you're, below. if you're patient, you know. Yeah. But after tax and everything like that. I think I could get around 700 cash with that. Because I'd be selling it probably about 15 to 16. It does have a crease in it. Oh, it does? Yeah. Can I see it? Kind of right, right here. Oh, I see it now. Yeah. I, man, I didn't see that surface. Well, that explains also the two grade. How long are you, how long are you gonna be here today? Um, I'm gonna probably leave soon today. I'll be back tomorrow though. I mean, look, you're at what, 500? I'm at like 700-ish. We're not too far apart. I mean, I just look, it's gonna be a little bit of work to get this graded and then sell all those cards as well. I mean, would you meet the middle? I'd meet at, can you do 625? I'd feel pretty comfortable there. That just covers the grading costs on that, pretty much. So we're not mad. Then I'm basically it. Yeah, I do it. Let's do it. Congrats on your Clemente. Thanks, buddy. No problem. All right, so we're ending off day one with this massive trade. So I ended up picking up these four slabs over here, plus the Rod Carew rookie card. And in return, I traded this Clemente that I picked up this morning. Really great copy. The color is off, and I didn't even see this until I saw it in the light. But this has a small crease right here. So. I also ended up getting 625 cash in this trade, but really happy to get a collector his first Clemente rookie card, and it worked out for both of us. Our last buy of the day, an E95, which you don't always see, another Hall of Famer, Willis. I actually picked up his T206 today, if I remember correctly. There's that in a three. So up next, I'm gonna grab some barbecue, hit up a Parkway Drive concert, and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. It is day number two here at the Houston Car Show. Yesterday was phenomenal. Now, today, this morning, I ran a half marathon, so I'm pretty tired, but the goal is to find some more raw cards to be able to grade. 
It's a bunch of rubber band stocks, and those can kind of take hours to go through. So I'm gonna use up the day doing that. Bought enough slabs yesterday. Let's see if we can find some deals. First deal of Sunday, we ended up picking up this four or five mantle for 525. I thought the centering on this one looked pretty nice, so I couldn't pass that one up. Can I take a look at your mantle, Aaron? And then what do you think you could do on the pair on these? Oh, three. Three? That's what I was thinking. Let's do it. An hour and a half going through a bunch of vintage stacks to be able to find those two gems. And I'm gonna be sending them to SGC. By the way, two SGC updates. This Thursday, I'm gonna be having Peter, the president of SGC on the personal collection. So you guys can see some of the cards that he's collected throughout his life and also ask him questions about SGC grading, which by the way, we're about to be doing group subs. So I've been working on this a little bit behind the scenes for a little bit and working on implementing that through the channel. So really exciting news on that side of things. Let me see if I can make a few more deals here before I leave today. Do you think you could be on the pair with these? Five and a quarter for you. Perfect, let's do it. I think last time, I can't remember if I looked at this Hack Wilson or not, and it was like 50-50 on it. I decided to pull the trigger and grab that one today. And then we got this nice Elmer Flick T206. It looks like one soft corner, but honestly, it looks very, very clean. And you can see the back on here as well. Hall of Famer, low end obviously, but still, you find a clean T206, you can't really pass that up. But I'm hoping this gets about the four. I don't know, it's always impossible to predict the grades, but really, really nice on this one. And then we have a Hack Wilson, doesn't have many cards. These are tough with their borders, but I'd also assume that this is around that four-ish grade. That's what my prediction is. Either way, 525 for the pair. Let's see what they do when they come back. And up in two weeks, we have the Utah Card Show. Hope to see you guys at the show or also watching the card show vlogs. Anyways, until then, see you next time.